back to San Francisco next year, but we are here live with Rob Crawford, VP of Sales at QLogic. QLogic, very interesting company, um, focused on the sort of the glue, you know, between the, the storage and the, and the systems. And, uh, and we're here with Rob. Rob, welcome to theCUBE. Great, thanks Dave, nice to, yeah, nice thanks, to be here. Thanks for coming on, so, uh, so let's see. This is, uh, our, I think, our, our 100th VM world in a row, but, uh, <laughs> but, but the, the ecosystem keeps growing. It's just yeah. amazing. The impact that virtualization has had, uh, particularly on, on your business, on I.O., it's really transforming it. Let's talk about that a little bit, and, and how so. Yeah, I, I think what we've seen, and you know, we do a lot of uh, you know, customer end user knowledge collection, and you know, one of the things we've seen is that a virtual environments, 80% of them are using a shared storage fiber channel environment, which is actually a higher percentage than I might have guessed. I think what you see is that with a lot of the features in VMware where you're, you're, sharing, uh, you're sharing resources, you're sharing storage, it enables you know, further extensions of, of the VMware capabilities, like the high, high availability capabilities. If you know, you're set up with an EXS, ESX server that fails for some reason in a shared storage environment, that failover is seamless uh, to, the, to the shared storage. So yeah, this 80%, uh, that's interesting. I didn't know the number was that high. I knew it was high, because if you have any kind of mission critical application, you're going to put it on a fiber channel device. I mean, I know a lot of end users, and we talk to them and say, look, you know, I love iSCSI, I love all this other stuff, but, my, but certain applications, I'm sticking with, with FC. And FC is really your business, isn't it? It is, and I think if you look at our history in the fiber channel space, you know, one of the things that people come to us for is the fact that we've got a proven fiber channel stack. It's, a, it's you know, an environment people are used to, they're comfortable with, they have confidence in. And that, you know, that's one of our key differentiators in the market is that we understand that part of the market better than anybody. Why is it so hard to build a hardened, Fiber channel stack. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's probably more of a technical question, but you know, no, you're you're in the business, and you know, let's face it, it's a technical sale. So, right. Why is it so difficult, and why are you guys so good at it? Well, I think one of the most valuable things you're you're trying to build up over time is confidence in your fiber channel stack, and that only really comes with usage cycles with end user customers, and years of experience, troubleshooting, improving, troubleshooting, improving, and that that kind of you know, bulletproof fiber channel stack that we've established in the market is based on our history. It's 15 long years of working with it. You know, we've got a lot of history and a lot of experience and expertise in the company. So we know you do that well, but you know, the SAN is under fire, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's been around, it's done, you know, for what now, more than a decade. Right. Driven great value, but a lot of customers are talking about, hey, you know, we're doing scale out, we're doing, using low cost commodity disk. Um, those trends, got to be on your radar screen. What do they mean to you and how does QLogic respond to that? Yeah, I, I think largely what we're seeing is converged networking as being a trend that we're in front of and we've been a very strong participant in. What you see with converged networking is that it doesn't matter if you're using you know, uh, iSCSI storage, if you're using fiber channel storage, if you're using FCOE as your protocol, you've got the ability to con converge that traffic into a common network fabric. And that's really where we try to you know, build a strong value proposition today. We, you know, obviously our fiber channel products are very strong, but as people move to Ethernet, 10 gig Ethernet, they want to use FCOE, they want to look at iSCSI, they want to look at, you know, in just regular network traffic in that same environment. So, you know, the obligation grows beyond fiber channel for us in terms of what we're bringing to the market. Converged networking, we're a leader in that part of the market today. Basically, it's ways you can use 10 gig Ethernet to, to you know, work with more of the of the data center traffic that you want to work with. Do you guys are you see customers actually beginning to to consolidate onto a single pipe, or are they more consolidating onto a single technology and still separating their LAN and their SAN traffic? I, I think one of the big things we see from customers is a requirement for flexibility. You've got you got some customers that want to try and converge everything. They want to simplify their networks, converge their traffic. You got some customers that want to keep it separate. You got some that want to migrate over time. You've got some that want to, uh, you know, maybe maybe have remote sites that are in different environments than than centralized sites. So I think flexibility is probably one of the main things we're focused on, and making sure that we, you know, continue to bring products to the market that enable flexibility for customers. Uh, basically, if they, you know, migrate their environment using latest technology, 10 gig Ethernet, and migrating, you know, the way that they're moving their data uh, over time, we're able to accommodate a good, you know, flexible solution there. So, how about um, InfiniBand? It's a topic that comes up a lot. It's an area that, you know, I've said actually, I think it's an opportunity for QLogic. I think, frankly, you guys, over the last couple of years, could have maybe even done a better job in InfiniBand. Yep. 
and I think you've really started to focus on that. Um, you're seeing a lot more server-to-server -server communication, you know, the high-speed, low-latency activity. At obviously HPC, but increasingly more commercial applications. What are you guys doing in Finiband? Uh, what are your customers telling you, and, uh, and what are you delivering? So Infiniband's an interesting part of the market, and I think one of the things you're seeing is that it's being implemented in broader use cases. It used to be HPC was kind of a focus point for the Infiniband market. We've got a very strong presence in HPC. Recent customer wins you may have heard about this year at, at places like Trilabs that are doing large deployments. Very differentiated, strong solutions from QLogic in that space. But I think what you're seeing is underneath that that there's a, there's a core low, low latency capability of Infiniband that is applicable for a variety of markets. You see it a lot now in financial markets. You see a lot uh, in terms of the way, the way people are building it, their vertical stacks around storage. Uh, so Infiniband's a part of the market that we're excited about. We think we've got a very compelling solution there. Uh, you know, we, we continue to work on you know, the roadmap and improvements. We're kind of the number two in that space. You know, there's another guy that's got more market share than we do. But we feel like there's a lot of opportunities for us to still be a strong player in that space. I'm a Red Sox fan. We were number two for a long time. <laughs> and, uh, and that's <laughs> working out okay, baby. Yeah. So. Uh, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you had a management transition, I guess it was about a year ago, a little less than a year ago. Uh, HK, your, your previous CEO, chairman, visionary, yeah. unbelievable individual, really saw the future, made some big bets. Yep. You know, people thought QLogic was crazy you know, five, seven years ago. Right. You know, going after it the way you did and, and putting everything into silicon. That, that, that obviously paid off. And now you got Simon running, running the business, CFO. That's right. What's, what's that transition been like? Um, how do you preserve that vision and still the execution ethos? What, what, are, your, what are your thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, I think one of the main things is it hasn't really been a light switch, in all honesty. So HK's got strong heritage, obviously, with a company. You know, the company was built around him largely. Uh, and I, he's still in the office every day. Really? You know, so I see him see on a regular him. basis. Uh -huh. uh, he and Simon are, are very much in lockstep. I think it's looked at being a phased uh, you know, transition over time. Uh, I think Simon's an interesting guy. I've come to know him you know, better in the recent months. You know, from a CFO, you don't expect a guy to have a lot of technical background. He understands our technology as well of a lot of, as well of a lot of our guys on the technical team. So he's got a lot of breadth and he's got a lot of you know, vision for where he wants to take the company. I think we're seeing a gradual transition from HK. And I, I think what you'll see is a consistent vision for, for QLogic moving forward. I don't see it's going to change course a lot. So Rob, what are you guys doing here at the show? Talk, talk a little bit about, uh, I mean, meeting with customers, but I mean, what's the big themes that QLogic is seeing? Yeah, we are. I mean, you know, there's some things that we, that we have in technology that are, that are pretty compelling for, for virtualized environments. One of the big things we're, we're pushing a lot today is the VM flex capabilities we have. Basically allows partitioning of a NIC to, uh, you know, to, to take, a, let's say, a 10 gig adapter and break that into multiple partitions. In a virtualized environment, that's really helpful because you're using a shared I.O. path and it allows you to have dedicated I.O. for specific applications if you want that. Gives you a lot of flexibility for configuring your network. Also gives you a lot of you know, benefits in terms of just simplifying the number of slots, the number of ports, the number of cables. So the converged networking, one of the challenges of converging your networking is that you're converging your I.O. And by offering NIC level partitioning, which is something that's unique to QLogic, we're able to allow the administrators to kind of define how they want to manage their I.O. path, where they want dedicated bandwidth to be available, those kinds of things. It's a great capability and it works really well in a virtualized environment. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've seen, it's interesting, I mean, we've seen just an explosion in everything, right? Um, processor prices come down, virtualization is consolidating, everybody said, oh, Intel's in big trouble and I think they're selling more CPUs than they've ever sold before yeah. because we live in an elastic market and we're seeing I.O. go through the roof with right. a com combination of Moore's Law and now multi-cores and virtualization. You have this multiplicative effect and customers aren't just going to say, okay, let's just go buy more ports and more cards from QLogic, are they? You got to be smarter about the way you, you manage that. But you're a sales guy. Are you afraid you're going to sell less? I mean, yeah. have you seen that in the market? Are you seeing this elasticity that I'm positing is the case? No, I, I think what you see is that, you know, Data growth continues at a pretty astonishing rate. I think everybody's predicted it forever, but it, and it continues to exceed expectations, I think. So basically, yeah. we need fat pipes to get data moved around. It's, it's as important in a cloud environment as it is in a data center, as it is in a desktop. So that requirement to be able to move data quickly and across fat pipes is something that you know we're on top of. It's the core of our business. Oh. I think one of the things that's interesting, one of the trends you see in the industry right now is that you've got a lot of consolidation in the storage space. Some of the little guys that were startups were a little disruptive. 
a lot of those companies are now part of bigger companies. HP, 3PAR, Left Hand, you look at Dell and the uh, Compellent acquisition and Equalogic. So what you end up with is that those large tier one OEMs have multiple storage protocols that they're trying to support, they're building environments around that, and being able to operate between those different protocols on a common network is, is one of the big requirements we're seeing out there. It's a place where we, where we really exceed because we've got you know, great fiber channel technology, but also the converged networking to bring in the other pieces. How about your switch business? I mean, I, I've always thought of you know, QLogic as a, you know, the switch for techies. Like yeah. my friend Eugene <laughs> Hakopians, who's at Caltech, yeah. he uses the QLogic switch as part of a block that he uses to build a, an, an archive where they basically uh, are, are documenting the universe, you know, a pretty intense project. Right. And, and he's pretty techy though. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, but, but last year, or year before, I can't remember exactly, I think it was last year, yeah. You guys began to expand into you know, more commercial markets, broaden your brand beyond right. just sort of a card supplier. You won a deal at HP and some other deals. What's, give us an update on the switch business. How's that, how's that going? Uh, I think, number one, we need to be clear about where we compete and where we don't. In the switch market, we're you know, at the edge, largely with the switches that we sell under our brand. And I think what we do is we offer a differentiated solution. The stackability, the scalability of our solutions is different, it, and it offers a pretty cost disruptive uh, and flexible solution for, for companies to build off of. So we, we feel like we've got a great solution in the switch space. It's an interesting part of the market. If you look at, you look at storage as a whole, we own a lot of the host side of the storage market through our adapter technology. We also, a lot of people don't know, we own a lot of the, of the target side as well. So a lot of the tier one storage players that are out there, they're using QLogic technology as their target for how they connect into the fabric. And it's really logical for us to be the centerpiece with our switch as well, because then you end up with an end-to-end -end, end -end, you know, fabric story from host to switch to target. So host to CNA to, um, to the switch to the target. Yeah, okay, good. The end-to-end -end, you know, vision that you guys have talked about for a while. Yeah. All right, Rob, well, listen, we're out of time. I appreciate good. you coming on Inside the Cube. Great to great to see you again. I appreciate your time. Good luck Thanks. with everything.